Hello, this is Thomas. I am once again throwing in my studio. I've decided to try to start filming a little bit just to see how this works out. Um, hopefully this will allow me to pick up some new tricks, uh, see how well I or crappy I'm doing, and uh, maybe work my way toward doing some workshops. That'd be kind of cool. Um, so I've been working on some platters just to give you an idea. These are some of the platters I've been working on. That one's not so good, that's the first one. This is the second one. Um, turned out not half bad. I'll have to trim it a little bit, but we're going to try to make a third one now. We'll see how this works. If I can get the tripod back where I left it. Start with uh, making these out of about eight pounds of clay each. Four pounds. Here's another four. Got to go ahead and wedge it up first. And for large things like this, is this actually on film? Yes. Beep. Um, Ram's head wedging doesn't really work, as you can see. It's just too much clay to mess with for that. So I tend to do spiral etching. I'm getting a lot better than I used to be. I wouldn't say I've got it down pat quite yet, but as you can see, it is a little bit easier to get it moving. Plus for larger items, usually anything over about three pounds. Sounds about right. Um, you want to end up not with a ball but with a cone. Makes centering a lot easier. And with ramp, with uh, spiral wedging, that gets you predisposed for that cone shape. Go ahead and smooth out the bottom here. All being to thwart any attempts to trap air. That's what I'm doing with uh, rolling it around. That gives me a point to throw down on the the bat that is currently missing from my wheel. Bat. There. Let's get this tilted over. And now you poor, poor people get to watch me attempt to throw. I'm sorry. And unfortunately, you also get to listen to me ramble. Once again, <laughs> well, you're the ones watching. Yeah. So, what I'm doing now, basically, you want the wheel damp, or the bat, damp, but not soaking. If it's dry, the clay doesn't want to stick to it. If it's soaking wet, there's a layer of water under the lump of clay, and it'll slide off. You want it damp, so it tries to adhere. Kaboom. Ideally, I should go ahead and pat this down, but eh, what the heck. Usually the first, um, it to centering is you want to push it down and that really glues it down to the wheel head. It compresses it a bit. And that's what that first push usually is. Otherwise, as you're pulling up trying to center it, you have a tendency to accidentally rip it off the wheel head. And that's not fun. But 
for those who are wondering, the clay I'm using is um, High Waters Helios. Which I fire in oxidation. centered real quick and then we'll work towards our platter. It looks like I'm just pushing down with one hand but I'm actually using both hands at the same time. As you can see. The other hand keeps the clay from going too wild. And with large items, it's more of a coax and cooperate. Well, actually, it's never really a force, but it's much more of a coax cooperate type scenario with large amounts of clay. At least that's what it is for me so far. Especially with large amounts, you'll notice that's a lot wider than it was when I started. As it starts to spread out, the other hand, you want to try to keep the clay going at kind of an angle so that it adheres to the wheel head as you go out and you don't accidentally trap some air underneath it. Uh, otherwise, when you go to cut it off the bat and trim the underside, you're going to have some nasty surprises that might screw up what you were intending. So. Now, see what we have here. Um, I am not used to talking to myself, to myself, to myself. Um, go ahead and get a sponge about, this would be fully empty. I'm going for about half empty-ish. And that way when I go ahead to open this, I'll still have some water to keep lubrication going. And there we are, sweetness. Go ahead and round that over and smooth it out a little so that when I go back to work it later I don't trap stuff in it. a little more pleasant to work. I tend to take the way the uh, thought process I take to work to uh, working with clay is each piece is its own entity so to speak. And I am not just making something I'm bringing it to life. I'm creating a personality for it as it's being thrown. So each piece, and with that in mind, each piece deserves its own individual attention, just like you would give a small child, so to speak. Part of this makes it fun, the other part keeps me from getting lackadaisical and that keeps me from getting bored and making blunders because oh look it's one after the other after the other no the way I see it each one is its own creation so now we're going to check the depth that we've opened it to and that's a bit thick I'm at about half that so idea for this, I don't like my platters flat, or my plates for that matter, any of the open, any of the uh, plate-like things. I want there to be a slight curve. One, 
since I'm using porcelain, it's much more prone to warpage, to um, slumping in the kiln when it's fired. Um, it's much more prone to just sit down on you. Um, if it's very flat, there's no support to it, so I like that a little bit of a curve to it. The other nice thing about that, if you're like me, I don't like my food mixing. So I like having, doing it this way allows a place, instead of the juices running around and just mixing and muddling everything up, they go to the middle. So you can put the foods that you want to stay out of things on the outside and just makes eating a little bit nicer. Um, 